Welcome to Module 2 of our Fluoroscopy course. In this course, we will cover radiation physics and radiobiology as it relates to fluoroscopy. In this module, at the conclusion, we will describe how X-ray photons are produced and characteristics of the X-ray beam, list and describe X-ray photon interactions with matter, list the radiation units of measure and explain what they measure, explain radio sensitivity of human tissue, and differentiate somatic and genetic effects to radiation exposure, and finally, discuss embryonic and fetal risks of ionizing radiation. Our topics in this module are X-ray photon production, X-ray beam characteristics, photon interactions with matter, radiation units of measure, radiation sensitivity of tissue, somatic and genetic effects, and embryonic and fetal risks of radiation exposure. This should be a review for radiographers because the fluoroscopy unit has an X-ray tube which is very much like the X-ray tube that is used for general radiography purposes. We will review thermonic emission, the focusing cup, the two types of radiation produced by the tube, Bremsstrahlung and characteristic, and the process of acceleration and deceleration of electrons inside the tube. We will not have to go into as much detail as you will have in radiography school, and we will focus on how these things relate to fluoroscopy. When the rotor of an X ray machine is activated, a small current causes electrons to boil off at the filament. The higher the MA, the more electrons will be present. This process is known as thermonic emission. The electrons float in a little cloud near the filament until voltage is applied to the tube. The device used to keep the electrons close to the filament in the cathode is called a focusing cup. If the focusing cup was not present, the electrons would float freely within the tube. This would not be efficient for the production of X-rays because it would be difficult to control the number of electrons present for radiation production. Another thing happens when the rotor is engaged. The target at the anode begins to rotate at high speed, approximately 3,000 to 9,000 revolutions per minute, by mechanical induction. The target at the anode is made of tungsten, which has a high melting point and a high atomic number. The high melting point is essential because of the amount of heat generated during X-ray production. And the high atomic number is essential so that the electrons produce X-ray photons in the range required for diagnostic imaging. Now we have an electron cloud boiling off at the filament, being held in place by the focusing cup at the negative end of the tube, and the rotating tungsten target at the positive end of the tube. The electrons at the focusing cup have potential energy, so all that is needed is voltage applied to the cathode to cause them to travel to the anode. Voltage is applied and off they go. Bremsstrahlung, commonly referred to as Brems radiation, is caused by the slowing down or breaking of electrons with a change in direction. This gives it the nickname breaking radiation. Brems radiation can have an energy level anywhere from one electron volts 
up to a set maximum two potential or kilovoltage peak. During the production of Brehm's radiation, the electron involved interacts with an electron in the orbit of the tungsten atom, but does not knock that electron out of orbit. Please note, Brehm's radiation makes up the majority of the X-ray beam. As a matter of fact, a kVp levels below 69 kVp, the beam is 100% Bremsstrahlung. Also, keep in mind a lot of heat is created. At the target, 99% of what is created is heat. Characteristic radiation is produced when the incoming electron is of sufficient energy to dislodge an electron from the K shell of the tungsten atom. The energy of the incoming electron must be at least 69.5 kilovoltage peak. We will round that up to say 70. Settings on an X-ray unit less than 70 kVp produce no characteristic radiation. Characteristic radiation comprises approximately 10% of the X-ray beam at the highest diagnostic range for kVp settings. The higher the kVp, the more characteristic radiation produced because there are more electrons of sufficient energy to produce characteristic radiation. Again, to produce characteristic radiation, the energy of the incoming electron must be sufficient to eject an electron from the inner shell or K shell of the tungsten atom. The binding energy at the K shell is 69.5 keV. Characteristic radiation is only formed by an interaction at the K shell. When an inner shell electron is ejected, the atom will undergo a cascading of electrons to fill the vacant space to stabilize the atom. The L shell electrons most often fill the empty space because they are closer and have a strong bond to the K shell. However, any filling electron can come from any of the six shells of the tungsten atom. The energy of the electron must be greater than 70 keV in order to remove the K shell electron. In addition, the energy of the resulting X-ray photon will be determined by the difference between the binding energy of the electron and the binding energy of the electron which fills the vacant space in the K-shell. Characteristic radiation, then, can have an energy anywhere between 70 keV up to a set keV. For example, if the kVp is set at 90, characteristic radiation will be formed. Let's assume the incoming electron interacting with the tungsten atom's K-shell has an energy of 90 keV. The K-shell electron has a binding energy of 69.5 keV. Suppose an N-shell electron replaces the ejected K-shell electron. The resulting X-ray photon would have an energy level of 79 keV. This is found by subtracting the binding energy of the replacement electron from the energy of the electron interacting with the K-shell. In this case, 90 keV, which is the incoming electron, minus 11 keV, which is the binding energy of the L-shell electron, is 79 keV. Of course, this is only one out of thousand of produced X-ray photons. The X-ray beam is polychromatic, 
which means it is comprised of X-ray photons with a variety of energy levels. In the example that we used, at 90 kVp, the X-ray photons can have an energy level anywhere from 0 0.1 to 90 keV. Brumstrahlen radiation will have energy from 0 to 90, and characteristic radiation will have energy from 70 keV to 90. We will learn more about this in the next section of this module. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.